Mina, Konbanwa, Jesus Freaking Gamer here. What a chapter I read today. First Kings chapter 4. This is talking about how once Solomon then set up his kingdom, and it was one heck of a kickoff with a bit of bloodshed and a bit of Solomon not quite getting everything right. But holy smoke was the man blessed. Let's just go with 1 Kings chapter 4 and start at verse 22. Now Solomon's provision for one day was 30 cores of fine flour, 60 cores of meal. I have no idea what a core is. Next part makes a lot more sense to me. 10 fatted oxen, 20 oxen from the pastures, and 100 sheep, besides deer, gazelles, roebucks, and fatted fowl. That's a lot of food for one day. How many people was, were in, was, was, were, I English, good. My English am good. Uh, how many people were in his house at one time? How many people did he count as a part of his house per day? Good gosh. Verse 24, for he had dominion over all the region on this side of the river, from Tifsa even to Gaza, namely over all the kings on this side of the river, and he had peace on every side all around him. And Judah and Israel dwelt safely, each man under his vine and his fig tree, from Dan as far as Beersheba. That I do know from Dan to Beersheba basically means like from California to Virginia, uh, or from east coast to west coast. I, I chose to say it's right in the middle, but from the west coast to the east coast or east to west coast. Um, from one end of Israel to another. All the days of Solomon. Solomon had 40,000 stalls of horses for his chariots and 12,000 horsemen. And these governors, each man in his month, provided food for King Solomon and for all who came to King Solomon's table. God helped those governors, but apparently there was no lack in their supply. But, but, the, but the, apparently that was me throwing it in. It says, and it, just to read verse 27 so there's no confusion, And these governors, each man in his month, provided food for King Solomon and for all who came to King Solomon's table. There was no lack in their supply. They also brought barley and straw to the proper place for the horses and steeds, each man according to his charge. <laughs> the golden age of Israel indeed. My gosh. And then it goes on to say how his wisdom and knowledge were unparalleled in his day. He was the smartest, wisest dude on the face of the frickin' planet. It's just like, where... <laughs> I guess the first thing I should say is, it's hard not to be jealous when you read something like that that's insane. I'm blessed, and I'm so thankful for what I have. I don't believe any single human being has ever been as blessed as King Solomon. To have that much provision in one day, you add that up over the years of his life, I could be wrong. Someone down below in the comments, do a... Uh, inflation, if you know ancient Israeli, you know, monetary values versus today, but I think Solomon was the richest man in history. I think he beat out Bill Gates um, and anyone else. I think the man's net worth over the course of his entire lifetime was probably the greatest in all of history. If he consumed that in one day, good gosh. Oh my goodness. Um, the blessing that can be on the lives of of God's people, the blessing that can come from a godly heritage and a godly inheritance and from godly parents. It's unreal. What a goal to strive for. Not that I'm going to be half that rich or half that well off. What I do know is that a lot of the blessing that I have does come from my mom, who was faithful to the Lord. And while I didn't think I was going to get anything, just because for the most part of our lives when we were together um, and she was alive, we were relatively poor, quite frankly. But um, as it turned out, there was an inheritance. There was something there. Um, and the Lord, the Lord had a huge hand in it, um, to say the very, very least. Uh, it wasn't purely my mom, but I know it was because of my mom turning to the Lord. And this is... I, can I prove it? No. It's by faith. But I do believe with all my heart is because my mom did love the Lord and because she served him to the best of her ability. Um, I have my criticisms and my critiques, but to the best of her ability, she served God. And out of nowhere, there was an inheritance and there was something for me. And I hope to leave something, you know, behind in this world for when, you know, when my time is up. Whenever the Lord calls me home or I get raptured into heaven, how cool would that be? I'm still holding on to that hug, doggone it. And... 
just to leave that behind and have a legacy that just is continually growing and continually greater and greater. It speaks so much of Solomon. It also speaks quite a bit of David. So the blessings that can come from serving the Lord are ridiculously huge. Um, I guess I'll end it on that note. Thank you guys very much for watching this video. I love you. God bless.